For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. If you would like to support the channel and become part of our ancient history fan community, visit patreon.com slash world of antiquity. Welcome to Trowelocity, a video series in which we talk with archaeologists and ancient historians about their work. In this episode, we will be speaking with perhaps the most well-known archaeologist working in ancient Egypt, Zahi Hawass, who's currently in charge of excavations going on at Saqqara. If you've been watching the news, you may have heard about a series of exciting discoveries that have been made at that site. We're going to speak about how all these things were found and what their significance is for the history of Egypt. But before we do, please show your support for the series by pressing the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's talk archaeology. If you follow Egyptian archaeology at all, you are bound to know who Zahi Hawass is, if not by name, then by his face. For more than 30 years, through his untiring work, his books, and his numerous television appearances, he has brought the world of the ancient Egyptians into homes around the world. Dr. Hawass earned his PhD in Egyptology from the University of Pennsylvania back in 1987. In the 1990s, he was the chief inspector and director of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. He served as the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities and then as the Egyptian Minister of Antiquities between 2002 and 2011. Dr. Hawass has overseen many important archaeological missions which have made significant discoveries, including a satellite pyramid of King Khufu, the tombs of the pyramid builders at Giza, the Valley of the Golden Mummies at Baharia Oasis, and many amazing artifacts at Saqqara, which we're going to discuss today. He's also managed the Egyptian Mummy Project, which used modern forensic techniques to answer questions about the royal mummies. Dr. Hawass has been a big advocate for the preservation of antiquities, supervising major cons conservation projects for the Great Sphinx and the Serapium and Step Pyramid at, at Saqqara. He also has initiated the construction of numerous new museums in Egypt. Add to that the many books that he has written, including Mountains of the Pharaohs, The Untold Story of the Pyramid Builders, and The Valley of the Golden Mummies, a bestseller, and the countless television appearances on programs like Good Morning America and The Today Show, and in documentaries, one of the most well-known being Mysteries of the Pyramids with Omar Sharif, not to mention an array of, an award, of awards, including a Golden Plate Award from the American Academy of Achievement for his accomplishments in archeology. span I could go on and on. But if I continue, we won't have time to talk. Please welcome with me a man who in 2006, Time Magazine chose as one of the top 100 most influential people, Dr. Zahi Hawass. Welcome, Dr. Hawass. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate having you on the show. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit first before we get into Saqqara, I wanted to ask you about um, your career and what made you want to be an archaeologist? I heard you were originally thinking of becoming an attorney. Yeah, when I was young, I, yes, I really wanted to be a lawyer. But when I bought the books of law, I was about uh, 16 years old. I did not like it. Then I went to Faculty of Arts. I studied archaeology without knowing what's been an archae archaeologist. I graduated and actually I did not like archaeology. Oh. But when I I joined the antiquities department uh, as an inspector of antiquities. And also I found out that I don't like the people around antiquities. And I tried to study to be a diplomat and I failed. I came back, they sent to me to do an excavation. During the excavation, they found the tomb and the workman asked me to come. Then I began to clean in the middle of the tomb and I found in the middle of the tomb, there was a statue. And that statue was for the goddess Hathor uh, oh. in the shape of the goddess uh, Aphrodite. And when I was cleaning the statue, I said, I found my love. And that was the passion. And oh. this is my advice to everyone. If you have passion for anything small, you make it big. So uh, was that when the, the first time that you really had a true love for ancient Egypt or did you think uh, about ancient Egypt? No, 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 I, it's, no, I never 
had any think of ancient Egypt when I was young. It oh, okay. happened after I graduated from archaeology. I see. Okay. Um, so um, can you tell me a little bit about um, your, your studies uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and um, who you studied under and, and what that was like? I started uh, from 1980 to 87. I was in a Fulbright uh, fellowship and uh, I studied under David O'Connor and also uh, David Silverman for the language. And I had my PhD writing about pyramids, about Giza pyramids. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, uh, about uh, the uh, the three the three big ones, right? Khufu, Khafre, and Mankari. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Yes. Um, what is it like being an archaeologist? Is it an easy life or is it difficult? Um, it is not an easy life. It's uh, but it's full of uh, adventures and uh, like uh, three days ago, I was in my dig in Saqqara and we found a shaft, and that shaft is uh, like. Uh, about uh, 30 meters deep means more than 100 feet down. And I went down that shaft. At the end of the shaft, we found a sarcophagus that we did not open it yet. And this to show how it's uh, full of adventures. And, uh, and sometimes I feel like I live in the time of the fairies because I'm with them all the time excavating making a discovery or writing about them. Oh, yeah. Wow. So uh, for those of uh, who don't know, could you briefly explain what uh, the significance of ancient Saqqara is? Saqqara, you know, is a, is a very important site because it has the pyramid of Zoser, the steep pyramid, and it also has the pyramids of Dynasty V and pyramids of Dynasty VI, about 13 pyramids in this site. Then I started my excavation in 2008 to 2010 around the pyramid of Titi. And I didn't why, why did you choose? Why did you choose to, to dig there? Because I really wanted to reveal the secrets of this pyramid because we know very little about Dynasty VI. And I thought that excavating around this pyramid, it would reveal important uh, information about Dynasty VI. Then I found, uh, I rediscovered the pyramid of Khuit, and uh, many scholars thought that this could be a mastaba, means a tomb, but I found out it was a pyramid, and I discovered another pyramid, new one, and I never found the name of the owner of this pyramid, and I thought that this pyramid could belong to the mother of Titi, and I wrote an article about that, and I found the tomb of the son of Titi. His name is Titi An Hikim. I stopped the excavation and because of, we had trouble in Egypt in 2011, but I came back again this year and I was able first to find out the temple of the pyramid that I found in 2010. Inside this temple, I found the name of the queen. She was not the mother of Titi, but she was a queen of Titi. Her name is Neet. In E I T. Uh, where was and the name uh, written? It's written in a in a block and then on an obelisk found inside the temple. The obelisk is about one meters and a half long, and it's, it could be the longest uh, uh, all kingdom obelisk to be discovered. And in the obelisk and in one of the lentils of the temple, we found the name of the queen. And that's really a big discovery. Yeah. And we add this name of the queen for the first time to the history. So at the same no, time. We, yeah. We, we didn't know about this, this person. No, before, no. Right? Yeah. This is, we write one page now in the history of this queen. And also, I, you know, Titi as a king was worshipped as a god on Dynasty 18 and Dynasty 19, which is the new kingdom. 3,000 years ago. And therefore, I excavated 57 shafts. The, soft, the shafts contain uh, coffins, beautifully decorated with scenes of gods and goddesses. And also, when you open the coffin, 
you discover a mummy. In one shaft, I found 57 coffins. We are studying them now. Oh, who and are we they? Discovered they are important people and even common people also who wanted to be buried beside Titi. Because in Saqqara, in the time of the new kingdom, you had big workshops for making coffins. Then the person, before he, he was dead, he had to go and buy a coffin. It depends on your wealth. If you are rich, you can buy a beautiful coffin. And even you can have your mummy and above the mummy, two coffins sometimes. If you are not rich enough, you can have a coffin without decoration. And after that, you have also workshops for mummies, for mummification. When the person die, they mummify him. It takes 70 days to finish the mummification. And this will give us, for the first time, an important idea about Saqqara in the time of the new kingdom, 1550 BC. Inside the shafts, we found a papyri. It's a chapter 17, one, one of the book of the dead. And the book of the dead is uh, to help the deceased to go safely to the afterlife. And uh, the papyri is five meters long, big one. Wow. We found also many stelas of the people who are buried there. They have stelas, such as a stela of someone. His name is Anch Betah. His wife, her name is uh, Mut M. Weah. And she and her husband stand in front of the god Osiris. And also you have another scene of them seated, seated and six of their children standing in front of them. They called one of the children, his name is Chaim Was, by the name of the son of Ramses II. And Chaim Was was the first archaeologist and the first Egyptologist and the first restorator. And he was buried at Saqqara inside the Serapium. So and you're saying that Hamas Ar was an ancient uh, uh, archaeologist. Yes, yes, he's the first archaeologist. Uh -huh. As the son of Ramses II, he used to restore the monuments of the pyramids. And he had a rest house at Abu Sair. It was put in a high area for him to watch the pyramids of Giza and Saqqara. And he called another daughter by the name of Nefertari. And Nefertari was the favorite wife, queen of Ramses II. We found also games that the ancient Egyptian play for the afterlife. One game called the Senate, in hieroglyphic means a cross. And the other one is a game 20. Two people play each game. The one who will win, he will go to the afterlife. Was, wasn't found, Senet in the uh, tomb of King Tut? What? Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. Yes. And also, we found a big axe for, for an army general. He died, and he put this axe beside him. And we found also uh, boats made of wood, masks of people, pottery. Uh, all, uh, uh, model boats or large boats? Model, model, model boats. boats. Mm -hmm. And we found foreign pottery inside the shafts dated 3,000 years ago. Some came from Palestine and Syria, and they put oil in it, trade uh -huh. of oil. And the other pottery came from Crete, also for oil. So we know they and traded we, with them. Okay. Yes. And we have also uh, shawatis dated to the new kingdom. They put the shawaptis as a statues beside the deceased to answer the questions of the afterlife. Only last week, we found names of kings for the first time, like Tutmud the first, Tutmud the third, Abin Hutub the second, and Tutan Khamun. And we found a big shaft, and inside the shaft, after 20 meters, a big large sarcophagus 20 tons weight, but it wow. was stolen in the antiquity. Oh, oh okay. We, 
but we have the name of the person called Titi'anch. And this is dated to the old kingdom. Then you can see that every day we reveal many secrets. Yes. And this is really uh, what we are working right now. And in mid, in, uh, on, on March 17th, I'm going to announce another big major discovery oh. in, the, in the West Valley uh, of the Kings in Luxor. Oh, so it's a, a different location. Okay. A different location. I'm excavating now with an expedition that I'm heading. And in the same time, I'm also heading the Egyptian mummy project. Yes. And you know, we found the mummy in the, uh, you know, with the Egyptian mummy project, we discovered uh, the mummy of Queen Hatshepsut and we discovered the family of Tutankh Amun and we discovered that Ramses III was murdered through the Harem conspiracy. And uh, Recently, I did announce that the unknown mummy, the screaming mummy in the Cairo Museum, she was the daughter of Sekhden Ra, and she had a heart attack and died. And about two weeks ago, I did announce uh, important information about the mummy of Sekhden Ra. He's the first king who started the struggle against the Hexos, who ruled Egypt for 150 years. And actually, uh, this discovery is very important because we found out that they did capture him and they tied his hands to the back and they hit him seven wounds in his skull. I heard about that. Not yeah, a good way to go, huh? Really, <laughs> yeah, that's to show major important things that were happening. We are going to open also the Grand Museum by the yeah. end of this year. It is the most important uh, culture project in the do we world. Know, do we know the date yet, or is it still not? No, it, okay. it will be announced, but it should be the end of this year. And we, uh, we're we going to have uh, the King Tut, our all King Tut artifacts will be shown there. Uh, three big galleries has more than 50,000 objects. And we have a, as a staircase with 100 statues of kings. And Ramsey II, he used a statue. 83 tons, and then Oblis could receive the visitors. I was there about two days ago. But, you know, I started building this museum in 2002. I was planning to open it in 2015. But because of what the Egypt had a trouble, it really was postponed. We spent one million dollars uh, in, uh. to make this, this, this uh, museum. And this to show that Egypt cares about their monuments. Yeah. And the president of Egypt himself is really caring about this museum. And he's pushing it to finish. It's an amazing museum. At the same time, I built another museum. It's called the Civilization Museum in the Old Cairo. And we are going to move in a big parade soon. If this Corona COVID-19 will finish, then the parade of the mummies will leave Cairo Museum in Tahrir to go to the Civilization Museum. That wow, we're that going to something. show, yeah, yeah, we're going to show the mummies for the first time, uh, for education, not for a thrill. I, I heard you opened like nineteen different museums. I built uh, more than twenty-two museums all 22. over Egypt. Wow, yeah, and now they are finishing some of the museums that I did not finish, mm -hmm. such wow. as the Chariot Museum. Uh, Sharm el Sheikh Museum, Sohag Museum, all of this can show that Egypt really is caring about uh, their monuments. And because we believe that the mon monuments of Egypt do not belong to Egypt only, but belongs to the people all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting. I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to go to Egypt uh, maybe uh, at the end of the year. I, I want to wait until the museum opens. But Please, if you come right to me, and I would love to see you. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, could you um, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the team that you're working with at Saqqara and at Luxor? Um, you know, uh, I, when, I, when I came to be the head of antiquities, I did announce a statement. And I said, we have to restore the people before we restore the stone. Means we have, I have to educate the people. I sent many of my students to get their PhD from outside of Egypt. 
and I did have schools open it to train them on the excavation techniques and the restoration and museums. Mm -hmm. And those are the people now that working with me. In, in Saqqara, I have like 60 workmen and I have a team of 12 people to assist me. And the same team is in Luxor. But the major discoveries, you know, on March 1st, Discovery Channel is going to show two special hours under the lost tombs of the Valley of the Kings. Two hours Discovery Channel on March 1st. You should really announce this because the people can witness all the discovery that I made in the West Valley of the Kings near the tomb of Amun Hotub III. I found 45 workshops, royal workshops, to make gold and furniture and pottery and others. I found a cachette of mummification in the valley. I found a tomb, number 65. All this will be shown in details in the, show, in the special of Discovery Channel on March 1st. Oh, we, we, we definitely want to watch that. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, hey, could you tell us a little bit about your efforts to get Egyptian artifacts returned to Egypt from foreign countries? I returned more than 6,000 artifacts, but it was really my dream to return the bust of Nefertiti from Berlin, the Zodiac at the Louvre, Rosetta Stone from the British Museum. First, I asked the museums to give it to them, to give this to us as a loan for three months at the opening of the Grand Museum. They refused. And I wondered how they can refuse. We give them exhibits and they work in Egypt. Then I really decided to find out all what happened to each object. I started with uh, the bust of uh, Nefertiti and I found out it was stolen from Egypt. And I sent uh, the first letter to ask the German government to send it back, but they refused. And the re revolution happened, but I'm still going to make a petition to ask intellectual Egyptians and foreigners to sign this petition to ask for the return of the past of Nefertiti. I used to bring also anything stolen from Egypt that museums bought or in the auctions, it was really a big thing to return our stolen artifacts back. Yeah, I know a lot of countries have had um, uh, Europeans take their artifacts from them and they're trying to get them back too. So uh, to be able to do that is, I think is a, is a good cause. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, um, that's great. Um, now I have a question that this is a, a, one of my acquaintances asked me to ask you this question uh, and they were wondering if there is footage at, at Giza in the uh, Great Pyramid of the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft, it, I guess it hasn't been released yet, or if there's any diagrams No, of it. no, no, I did uh, publish. Oh, you did? Uh, uh, there is a book called uh, The Treasures of the Pyramids. I published all the photographs okay. to show the, the shafts inside Kofu Pyramid. And oh, I published okay. a scientific article. If he goes to search for the publication, of the so-called air shafts in the Great Pyramid, he will find many photographs that they already published. Excellent, okay, that's good to know. All right, so uh, what additional work needs to be done at uh, Saqqara? Is it nearing completion or do you have years? No, left? but you know, in Saqqara, we found until now only 30% of the really? Egyptian monuments. It's still there is still 70% is buried underneath the ground. Wow. Then we are going to continue these excavations, it's going to continue for years. Ah, wow, that's something. And, and, and what about at Luxor, your other project? And the same, the same in Luxor to continue the work in Luxor, the same. And I'm, I'm because you know, in the Valley of the Kings, I'm searching for the tomb of Amun Hotub the first and Totbu the second and Ramses eight. Their tombs were not found. And also all the queens of dynasty 18 and the sons, and the daughters of the kings were buried somewhere in the valley. And this is what we are searching for. Wow. So you've, you've, got, you've still got a lot of work ahead of you, it looks like. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. 
Um, if people uh, want to find out more about um, the excavations that you're doing, is there a place they go? go? They go to my website, drhawas.com. Dr. Hawass. And the website will publish all the details. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate thank you, you taking the time to uh, speak with we me are today. Welcome. It was a thank you. pleasure talking to you. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, and uh, I wish you the best, and, uh, and uh, we look forward to more discoveries. Thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye. You might like my little e booklet, Why Ancient History Matters. It's designed to persuade people that the subject is important, even in the modern world. You might also wish to use it to help spread the word. So feel free to share it with someone you know. It's free for anyone who wants it. I've left the link in the description box below the video for you to grab a copy. Catch you later.